If you're a guitar player looking to control Ableton Live with your feet, I think this is the perfect MIDI controller for you. In this video, I'm gonna be reviewing the Morningstar MCA and showing you how to connect and program this to use with Ableton Live. So let's dive in and get started. So I just got this MIDI controller about a week ago. And I have to say, I was completely wrong about this controller. The whole time that I've viewed this controller from afar, I've got a lot of from Studio Stage students that um, use this and said they loved it. I thought the appeal of this controller was the screen, right? The fact that you could see your screen and see exactly what each control uh, and each button did. And certainly that's a part of, that's part of the appeal. It's part of what makes this really, really cool. But ultimately what I've discovered very quickly and my short amount of time with this pedal is the appeal of this pedal is the, the power that it has, the ability to program this to do anything very, very simply. So yes, the screen is a part of it, but the ability that I have uh, with the editor software that's very easy to understand uh, and very easy to program uh, to make this do whatever the heck I want it to do makes it a perfect uh, pedal for people that are looking to control Ableton Live with their feet, uh, particularly people that are looking to use this with Ableton Live with uh, connecting to some other guitar pedals as well. So first let's talk about basic features of this pedal and then we'll dive in and talk about how to actually connect it to your computer. So first thing with this pedal, there are 30 banks uh, on uh, this pedal. And what's really cool is each bank has two different pages. So you can toggle and change pages by pressing those buttons. Each page has eight different presets. Uh, and so in total, there's 16 different presets for each bank across 30 banks. And what's really cool about this is it doesn't just mean that this is a preset. Like this isn't just press this and it does one thing. Because this is programmable, this button can do uh, a bunch of different commands, we can add delays, we can do MIDI, we can send almost any type of MIDI message you want, as well as keyboard shortcuts, which is really, really cool. So for people that are trying to automate and do unique things with Ableton Live that require keyboard shortcuts with your feet, that's possible to do with this. And again, the editor control software is very simple to use, very easy to understand. So with that, let's dive in. Let's actually start using this pedal and setting this up. So first thing I'm gonna do is connect this to my computer. There's a couple different ways to do that. You could connect using five pin DIN MIDI because these are the outputs that it has, connections that it has here. So we could use a five pin MIDI cable to go MIDI out into our computer. We likely would have to power this with a power supply. You, you need to test it out in your scenario and setup. But the easiest way to use this is uh, to use a USB cable just like this, plug it into your computer and you'll see this bad boy boot up uh, and you'll see the front screen here that we have. And I've got a couple things that I've already pre-programmed here that we'll look at and I'll show you, but let's uh, go over to our computer. First thing you see when you plug it in is it says keyboard setup assistant. I just ignore this because the computer can see this as a keyboard in addition to uh, a MIDI controller, but I'm not gonna mess with this. I haven't messed with it at least, and I've had no issues and I can still uh, control uh, and send uh, key commands from this. So let's dive into the editor here and talk about how to set this up. One thing that I love about this that's, that's huge is I'm gonna include the link to the editor. It's browser-based. Yes, you can download, I believe for iPad, iPhone. Um, I don't know if it's available on Android. I'll, I'll put a link if it is. You can download an app on your phone, but what I love is you can access this directly from the browser, which means this is really easy for them to update as opposed to having to download an app and wait for an update. They can update this essentially in real time to fix anything add a lot of extra features. I'm talking too long, I'll shut up, let's get going. So first thing I'm gonna do, select a device to connect. Uh, I, you can select up here, I'm gonna choose Morningstar MC8 and immediately it loads. Like it's very fast, it's very responsive. Uh, it's been programmed uh, very, very well. So kudos to Morningstar for uh, great programming. So first let's talk about how to navigate the editor really quickly. We can choose banks here. So I can click and just hover and choose one of my 30 banks, right? You can see I've already named a bank here for song one. And then I have all these different presets that I can access from uh, the bank, okay? And if I click here and just hover, I can get access to this. Or if I click again, you'll see it opens to the right and stays open and it clicks, uh, click again, it opens to the left and stays open, which is uh, which is great here, okay? So um, now let's let's edit a bank. Let's just uh, go here and we'll click edit bank. You see that I have this uh, bank set to say song one. I wanna make this say, uh, instead of that, let's call this basic controls. 
Okay, so we'll rename that. I'm gonna do save bank settings. And when I do that, I'm gonna actually show you the screen of this. So I'm gonna do save bank settings. You can see that immediately updates in real time. It shows the editors connected. Some things you have to actually uh, like disconnect the pedal from the editor to, to get it to work, like keyboard shortcuts, that sort of thing. Um, but it's really, really easy to program. Now let's program just a real simple setup. You can see I've already got these uh, named here. So I'll show you how to do this. Let's just program a play, a stop, a previous and next. And then we'll talk about some more advanced things that we could do and we're talking about what we need to do in Ableton Live to get this uh, to work, okay? So let's go back to our editor here. Now I'm editing the bank, let's edit the preset. And you can see I'm on bank one, preset A, uh, which just so you get this, is this pedal right here, okay? Or this button right here. So um, let's change the short name. This is what this would be. So I could go in here and type this. Uh, and I'm just gonna leave it actually set to play. And then you can go over to the long name and say song playing. Okay, uh, and the long name is what's gonna show up, uh, I believe where editor is right here, that's gonna show up once you trigger it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is do save preset, right? So it's updating that preset. Now let's let's figure out what we want the preset to do. So you can see how uh, 16 different messages can happen all from this one button, which is amazing. And, and it's again, so simple and easy to program. So I can press this one button, I can do 16 different messages. And um, okay, I'm talking too much, let's dive into it. I just, it's, it's really, really cool. So what's the action? This is something that's really neat to me. It's not just when I press this button, do this thing, but it's press, when I release this button, do this, when I long press, do this, when I long press scroll, when I long press release, release all, double tap, double tap release, long double tap, on first engage, on disengage, um, so many options here. Let's stay simple for now. I'm a dumb person, I need simple things. So I'm just simply gonna say when I press, do this. Okay, what type of message do I wanna send? Okay, if you like in-depth programming and you like being able to do almost anything, check out this list. These are all the different values that you can send from this. Now, when you're working with Ableton Live, I suggest keeping it simple. Uh, K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, stupid. I didn't call you stupid, that's just what the saying is. Stick with note on messages for the most part, okay? So I'm gonna say a note on message. What note do I want here? Um, I'm gonna start with note zero, our lowest possible note. Now one quick note here, uh, again, I've only used this pedal for a week. I'm working on a course for this, so I have to dive in a little bit further. One thing that I notice immediately is that uh, it shows note zero as C minus one, and able to live note zero is actually C minus two. That's just, it sees middle C differently. Some software gives you the ability to change that, what middle C is. I, I'm not sure if the editor software has that or not. Um, I'll dive in, and if it does, maybe I'll leave a link in the description to update that, but you'll definitely see it in the MC8 course when that goes live on the site. But for now, let's pick note zero. Uh, in order for this to work in Ableton, we've gotta go something other than velocity zero. So we'll do velocity one, okay? And then what MIDI channel? I have 16 different MIDI channels and Ableton can see all 16 of them. So we're just gonna start with one. Uh, and we're just gonna do one simple preset. Now, important, when you're working with presets, make sure you hit save before you move on to the next one. My son was helping me with this the other day and he said, dad, you didn't save. And I was like, let's test and see if it saves. Uh, and it doesn't. So make sure you save before you go on to the next one. Okay, now I want to do stop, previous, and next. I've already done these, but let me show you what I set these to. In fact, let me make sure they're actually set to the right thing before we move on. So let's go to our next preset. We'll go over here to stop. We're gonna click and load that. It says stop, long name. Let's actually change this to uh, song stopped. Okay, we'll save preset so that that saves. Now let's just look, okay, so there's, there's stop, you can see. Let's just look and see what we've got going for this. Okay, so where MIDI action is press, uh, note, we did note one, so we just went up one, velocity one, MIDI channel one, that looks perfect. So we'll hit save preset. Let's just really quickly look at previous, same thing. Uh, you can see short name is P-R-E-V, long name previous locator, note three, velocity one, MIDI channel one, looks great. Next, same exact thing, next, note four, velocity one. Actually, let's change our long name here to next locator. Okay, we'll hit save preset, that's gonna save to the pedal. Now, let's just start with the default here, okay? And um, let's connect this to Ableton Live, let's get this running, uh, and then we'll come back and we'll, I'll show you a couple of my favorite things that I've learned, um, more in-depth stuff that we could do with this pedal that, that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's go over to Ableton Live,
I'm gonna to go to Preferences, Command, Comma. When you're working with any MIDI controller in Ableton Live, uh, you wanna to go to Preferences, again, Command, Comma, Control, Comma, if you're on a PC. You wanna to go to the Link Tempo MIDI tab, and we're looking for the incoming port for Morningstar, okay? There's four different ports. We're just gonna worry with port one for now. So I'm gonna go over and I wanna make sure remote is enabled for my Morningstar. The reason I choose remote is I want to remotely control Ableton Live from this pedal, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you my four basic mappings that I make whenever uh, I am mapping a MIDI controller to Ableton Live. This is what I do when I'm controlling and running tracks in Ableton Live. There's so much more we could do than this. If you're doing a live looping setup and scenario, you probably wanna do more. But these are the four basic commands that I start with. Okay, so let's close our window here. We're gonna press tab to go over to arrangement view because we're running tracks. And uh, I'm gonna MIDI map here. So let's click MIDI, okay? Let's click play. Watch how simple and easy this is. I'm clicking play in Ableton Live and then over on my pedal, I'm gonna click this play button, okay? What you're gonna see in Ableton Live is it map. So let's do stop. So we'll do stop. I'm gonna press stop on my pedal. It's map to stop. Let's go previous. And I'm gonna do previous, next, and we're gonna do next. Okay, so those four buttons are now mapped to Ableton Live. So let's hit Command M to get out of MIDI map. And uh, let's just show you in Ableton Live the, the way that this works. So if I were to press play, press play on my pedal, that's going to play. Okay, and again, if I press stop, let's press stop right here, so I'll stop it. You can see Ableton Live stopped. And then again, I can press previous and next to jump around uh, in locators. And I don't, uh, at the moment, have locators set up, so that's perfectly fine. We'll skip past that. But that's how simple and easy it is to get this up and running. Again, if you're like me and you are got to keep things pretty simple, you're not an incredibly smart person, um, that was so simple and easy to program. It didn't take a whole lot to do, right? Um, uh, it's just really easy to do basic controls to get up and running. Now, let me show you on the pedal, though, because let's say I want to have some settings specific for a specific song. So we'll go through a couple kind of more in-depth things. We're adding to this as we go. So let's say I want to make it to where I can go to um, um, the second page of Bank One. So to toggle pages, I'm just going to press both of these buttons at the same time. And you can see that we're now on page two, okay? Now, if I want to go Bank Up, I can press both of these to go Bank Up. If I want to press both of these to go down, that's going to go to bank down, okay? So now let's say, let's stay on page one here uh, and let's go to, or let's say on bank one rather, and let's go to page two and see if we can program something. Okay, actually it actually looks like we have a, a note programmed up here. Uh, I don't know what that's for, but let's, let's try it out and see what we can do. So let's go back over to our editor and uh, we're looking for, let's see, preset H, I believe is what we're looking for. So let's load that in. Oh, nope, that's not it. Uh, page uh, two, so what would that be? G9, okay, preset P. So uh, short name is G9, long name apparently is testing G9. Apparently I was testing G9. So let's change this. Um, let's say we want this to be, um, let's just have it be another MIDI note. It doesn't really matter for now. But look, again, let's say we'll make this press because um, I'm going to show you something really cool here in just a moment. And we're just going to make this MIDI note 18, note on, velocity one, MIDI channel. Uh, and let's call this song one, okay? And then we'll go over here and we'll say, uh, long name trigger song one. I'll show you in a second. I'll disconnect the editor to show you what this actually looks like on the pedal for long name. Okay. So now let's save this and let's go back over to Ableton Live. And now what I could do again is um, let's just add a locator here. Let's say this is going to be song one. Let's just rename it song one. Do Command M. And now I'm gonna mini map this. So again, we'll go back to our pedal. Uh, we're gonna go here. You see one, it says song one. So again, th the screen is great. It's super nice to be able to see this. Uh, but again, that's a very small piece of what makes this pedal so cool to me. So we're gonna click this locator. I'm gonna press this song one button. Okay, and when I do, you'll see now it maps to song one. Uh, so let's do Command M to get out of this. And then what's cool, the way I would actually use this in live performance is I could press stop. Okay, if I wanna to go to song one, which is up here, I'll toggle page to go to song one and press song one, which is great, okay? So again, that's um, uh, kind of just basic uh, setup, play, stop, next, previous. Uh, we can change pages. Let me show you something that's really cool. Um, two of my favorite things that we can do with this pedal, but before I show you that, I wanna just ask you to consider subscribing. I post a brand new tutorial every single day about using Ableton Live on stage, about using gear like this with Ableton Live. So if you're looking to perform like a pro with Ableton Live, this is the place, completely free, every single day, 10 a.m. Central. Hit the subscribe button, enable the bell icon so you see exactly when I go live. 
and you won't miss out. Okay, so here's what I wanna do. I wanna take this pedal, uh, well first let's do this. I wanna take this pedal and I wanna send just a keyboard shortcut from here, okay? Let's make it to where when I press this that um, uh, it will send, uh, create a new audio track in Ableton Live. I, I don't necessarily know why I would wanna do that, but I wanna do that for the sake of this tutorial, okay? So let's go back to our computer. Let's go to our editor here. Um, I'm gonna put this on, let's say, uh, page one. So I'm gonna to toggle page one back and we're gonna pick the H preset, okay? So let's go to preset H and we're gonna call this add audio track. Yeah, let's do add audio and then we'll say add audio track for this, okay? We're gonna save a preset. And then uh, for this, we're gonna say press. Okay, type, we're gonna scroll all the way down here to keystroke, okay? This threw me off at first. If you're not gonna use a modifier, like command shift, you just wanna um, press a, a keystroke, you wanna press one, whatever, then skip these first two options here and just go straight to keystroke. Uh, I was not reading, you know, you should read. It's beneficial, it's helpful. Uh, it helps make the world go around. I, and I was looking at modifiers and for the life of me thought, well, that's kind of stupid. Why can't I add a keystroke? and it's over to the right. So don't be dumb like me. Uh, that's how you get that. But let's add a, a, a uh, track. So we're gonna do command, okay? Uh, which, let's see if we can find that. Scroll down here, Windows PC, Command, Mac, there we go. And we need T, which is our shortcut to add a track, okay? So when we select this, we're going to do Command T, which is going to add a track in Ableton Live, okay? What's super important we do this, one, let's save our preset. Two, we need to disconnect our MIDI controller, okay? And I'll show you, uh, let's disconnect, and I'll show you what this looks like on my controller so you can see add audio track, uh, add audio, that's our long name. This is our short name for preset H. There's a lot of possibilities we could do here by seeing that, that long name. But let's go over to Ableton Live now, okay? So I'll show you Ableton Live. And it's super important in Live to make sure you've clicked into the screen so that it is uh, the most prominent thing, okay? Uh, you wanna make sure that that's what's selected so that um, you're not accidentally performing Command T in, in Safari, which I think is a new tab, which would be kind of funny. You could open new Chrome tabs uh, on your computer with your feet if you wanted to, why not? Okay, so I'm gonna press this Add Audio button, which again is right up here, but I'll show you Ableton screen so you can see this, and we'll do that. Command T, we added a new audio track. I don't know exactly why I would do that, but it's just magical to see, right? You could hit delete, you could do undo, um, you could uh, do all sorts of crazy things. You could change the global quantization from uh, one bar to eighth note so you could get back on, on click if, if things went haywire and you got off track. So many really, really cool possibilities, right? Uh, so now let me show you my final, um, not my final trick, but uh, in total, but my final trick for the sake of this video when it comes to using this pedal, and that's setting up what uh, what I would call and consider a all access mode. Uh, the ability to basically press a button and jump to a specific bank uh, uh, based on what that button is. This is a, a really cool feature um, that we can program, uh, again, pretty simply. Like I love how simple and easy it is to program here. So let's go back to our editor. We're going to reopen this, select device to edit. And we're going to choose Morningstar MC8, okay. Looking at my pedal here, let's go with preset G, okay? Uh, so that is this button here. Okay, you can see it's currently empty. And I wanna set that to where when I uh, press this button, that is going to jump me to uh, uh, bank 30 in a certain preset or whatever. Maybe it just jumps me to a certain bank that's then gonna have controls that I've done all sorts of fancy things too, okay? So um, what we're gonna do is let's go to preset G. So let's select G here, which is currently empty. And we're gonna call short name, we'll call access. Okay, long name, we'll call all access mode. Now to make sure I don't accidentally toggle this, for action, instead of press, let's do long press, which is really, really cool. Again, all these different actions. Do I want it just when I press or when I hold down for a little bit? If I double tap, uh, tons of possibilities, okay? Then type, let's jump to, uh, let's see if I can find bank jump, okay? So go to last use bank, no, all right? What bank number do I wanna go to? Let's jump all the way here to bank 30. Um, and toggle page, let's see what page do we want. It actually doesn't matter what, what page you want. We'll just leave it set on whatever. So now I'm gonna hit save, okay? And let's disconnect so you can see this in real time. Let's show you the pedal. 
So uh, all access mode is this one when I long press. I want you to see we're on bank one, page one. Okay, so there's page two, there's page one. I'm going to long press on this, and when I long press and let go, we jump all the way to preset 30, which is really, really cool. Now, I've programmed, or at least I started a program, I don't know if this finished, a exit access mode. Uh, again, um, I, I guess this is a little more in depth than I wanted to go, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you this because this is really, really stinking cool, okay? So I press this button to get to bank 30. How do I get back to the preset that I was on, the bank that I was on? Um, let me show you how to program that. Again, this is the beauty of how simple this is. So we need to go to bank 30. Okay, so let's uh, select our device. We're gonna go, to, oh, we're already there, bank 30. We're going to go to preset D, I believe, exit access. Okay, now exit access mode, uh, let's just call it exit to clean this up. Um, try to say that five times fast. Exit all access is the long name. Now the action is long press. We're gonna do a bank jump. This time instead of um, jumping to a specific bank, right? So I could say, um, let's go here so you can see. If I did bank jump, this is what it would look like. Go to last use bank. Uh, if this is set to no, we can jump to a specific bank. But I don't wanna to jump to a specific bank. I wanna to jump to the last thing that I was in before I went to all access mode. Hopefully that makes sense. I wanna press this to basically exit all access mode and go back to where I was. So what's cool about this for go to last use bank, I'm gonna to go to last use bank only, or I could do last use bank slash page. Um, let's actually do that because I wanna go exactly where I was. So now we're gonna hit save preset, okay? So now um, let's go back for the grand reveal. Here's our exit button. We have this set to long press. Actually, let's disconnect uh, our editor. And uh, exit all access is preset D. So I'm gonna hold this. That's gonna jump me back to preset one. You may be going, well, okay, um, you know, that's not very fancy because um, you, know, you didn't really do anything cool there because we were already on one and we jumped back to it. Let's actually change to a new bank. Let's go to bank three, okay? Uh, let's go to bank four here and let's program bank four I'll show you, uh, select your device. Let's program bank for preset A uh, to be all access, okay? Just to show you how this works. We'll go all access here. We're gonna do long press. I know I'm moving quick. Uh, we wanna do bank jump. I want to do this. I wanna jump to 30, okay? We're gonna hit save preset. Oh, let's actually change our name. We'll call this access, all access mode. We'll save preset, okay? And now let's get back to our, let's just connect our editor and let's get back to our pedal here. Now, here's what's really cool about this, okay? Um, so I'm on bank four, again, access mode is A. I'm gonna hold this, that's gonna jump me to 30. I wanna get out of this and go back. I'm gonna hold exit, that's gonna take me, oh, let's long press, there we go. That's gonna take me back to preset four. Again, let's bank down, let's go to preset one. I could play, I could stop, I could go previous, I could go next. Uh, and then when I hold access mode here, it's gonna take me to all access mode. It's long press just to be safe. Press it again and it's gonna take me, oh, long press, oh, exit, there we go, press exit. And that's gonna take me back to one. So this pedal seriously can do whatever you want it to do. Um, I didn't even get into the inputs on the back of this, the, the five pin DIN MIDI outputs uh, on the back of this. The expression aux MIDI out, so each of these could be a, a MIDI out to uh, external pedals, to keyboards, whatever you want it to be. You could set up uh, expression pedals. Um, there's so, so much that this pedal can do. Again, I'm already at uh, about 23 minutes worth of a tutorial, and this should have been about 10 minutes because of everything this pedal can do. But I hope you see how incredibly easy it is to do. The editor is incredibly well programmed. It was really simple for me to look at uh, this and just get up and running and get going with this. I mean, practically right away. I didn't even read a manual to figure any of this out other than getting stuck on um, keyboard shortcuts, which my nine-year-old son just said, uh, dad, it's right there. Uh, so, because he's smarter than me. Other than that, that's the only thing I struggled with with this editor. So again, I think if you're a guitar player looking to control Ableton Live from your feet, you want something that's completely customizable, completely programmable. You cannot go wrong with the Morningstar MC8. So if you're interested in that, click the link in the description of this video to go to the Morningstar site to purchase this pedal. Thanks so much for watching. Again, if you want more content like this, make sure to, to subscribe, enable the bell icon. I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.